Hi, my name is Martin Roberts. I'm curatorial manager here at the Herbert Art Gallery and Museum, and I'm one of the curators who worked on the Two Tone exhibition. So this exhibition is called Two Tone Lives and Legacies, and it's really a celebration of the Two Tone movement that originated largely in Coventry in the late 1970s. The exhibition looks at the emergence of two-tone in the late 1970s and some of the reasons for that. And we also explore the musical roots of two-tone, which was kind of a blend of Jamaican ska and punk, really. And we look at both of those movements as they existed in Coventry at the time. This is the first section uh, of the exhibition, uh, which is called Ghost Town. And here we look at some of the factors that fed into the emergence of two-tone in the late 1970s. So we talk a little bit about the, um, the political and social background at the time, you know, what life was like in Britain in the late 1970s. And this was in many ways a tough time, certainly for young people growing up in this country. There was a lot of unemployment. Economically, the country was not in a particularly good way. There was a lot of racism around. Organisations like the National Front were very prominent. So there was all that going on in the background. But then we look at the um, musical roots of two-tone as well. And two-tone was very much a blend of, of Jamaican ska and punk. And it was kind of the brainchild of Jerry Damas. Jerry Damas came up with this idea of, of blending these two types of music, but also he wanted to create music with a, with a social and political message as well. He was very interested in creating music that would bring black and white people together and combat the kind of racism that was so prevalent at the time. So in this section, we look at the, the music scene in Coventry at that time. We look at some of the bands who were, who were around, some of whom went on to, to become very well known, like the, you know, the Specials and the Selector, but some of the bands as well who, who perhaps didn't, uh, didn't make it big in quite the same way that they did. One of the things that we've got on display are a set of copies of the, the fanzine Alternative Sounds. This was a fanzine that was developed by Martin Bowes, who was a musician in Coventry at the time, and described in a lot of detail the, um, the, you know, the, music, of the music scene at that period. There's a lot of reviews of, of gigs, a lot of articles about the bands who were, who were around at the time. They really take you back to that period. Um, you know, it's a great way of sort of stepping back in time to that period and um, give you a real flavour of, of, of what was going on in Coventry at that time musically. So one of the, the really special features, I think, of this exhibition is that we've worked with Jerry Damas, the founder of Two Tone and the founder of The Specials, to bring together a collection of material which is owned by Jerry and which is now on display in the exhibition. And this really gives a fascinating insight into Jerry's thought process when he was developing his ideas for Two Tone, both musically and in terms of how he wanted it to look visually. One of the things that we have from Jerry are some early artworks uh, you can see behind me, which go back right to his days as an art student. And you can see some of these, his ideas starting to develop here. We also have a number of uh, flyers from early gigs that the specials did, particularly in Coventry. A lot of them when, when they were still known as the Automatics and they were still sort of finding their way. The collection of items that we have on loan from Jerry contains some really amazing artefacts. We've got, for example, the original handwritten lyrics of Ghost Town, the single that the specials are probably best known for. We also have some early artwork from Jerry where he's working out his ideas for how he wanted the, the two-tone record label to look. So it's his very first ideas for the kind of the design of the record label, but also the design of the two-tone man, the famous Walt Jabsko figure, which you know is so well known to two-tone fans around the world. And we also have, happen to have on display the, the bowling shirt, which was the origin of the Walt Jabsko name. Uh, you can see it on display in the showcase next to me. This was an American bowling shirt owned by Jerry Damas, and it has the names Walt Jabsko on it. And obviously this became the origin of the name for the two-tone man. Also in this showcase are a couple of suits that were worn by Jerry. The blue suit was worn when the specials were on tour with The Clash on the On Parole Tour in 1978. So at that point they were still working out how they, were, how they wanted to look and what the style of the band members was going to be. And the, the other suit, uh, the jacket here, was worn by Jerry Dammers when he was featured on the front cover of the first ever edition of the Face magazine. We have that copy of the Face magazine on display as well. So both of those things are really great artefacts to have and really take us back to that, t to that period. So moving on from Jerry Dammers' section, we then look into Two Tame Records, which celebrates the output from the first single and the formation in 1979 to the last release in early 1986. This first element of it looks at the actual record label itself, from Jerry's founding it to them joining up with Chrysalis, but also the different bands on it. Some of them just released one single, like The Beat and The Madness, before launching off into much bigger careers. 
Um, and other bands released many singles, of course, the specials and the selector. In this section, we showcase some of the singles and albums known from the label, but also some of the production behind it. So we do have the handwritten Ghost Town lyrics by Jerry Dammers, as well as some of the hand stamp singles, the first release of Gangsters, the band had to stamp the, the record sleeves themselves. And of course, some of the highlights are the instruments with Sax's saxophone, we've got Compton's guitar and Neil Davis's guitar, actually from before the selector, so it was the one he was developing his music on. So one of the key elements of Two-Tone wasn't just the great music, but also the message behind it. And in this area, we explore just a few of the songs uh, and what caused them to be made and the message behind them. So this section of the exhibition, we also feature three photographers. And these are photographers that were there right at the time that, that knew the bands early on, like John Coles, he was living in Coventry and was almost photographing them from their first rehearsals. So there's a wonderful continuity of, of what he's photographed. And Chalky Davis was a key collaborator with Jerry Dammers on the look and feel of the first couple of special albums. And we feature five of his wonderful photographs. Tony Ty, a slightly different photographer, she didn't know who the two tone bands were when she was commissioned to photograph them on the Dance Craze tour, but she really captures the, the feeling of the getting ready for the gigs, what it was like to be on stage, but also wonderful images of the fans who were so important to the two tone movement. So part of this exhibition, we commissioned artists to celebrate the two tone movement. This section is by Stuart Francis Easton, and it's the two tone timeline. And it takes us right from the very early days of Two-Tone and the specials on parole tour with The Clash through some of the major beats like the first single, key albums and key moments, all the way through to the dance craze, the big release that really made Two-Tone an international movement, all the way ending up with the iconic anti-apartheid hit Free Nelson Mandela. In Two-Tone Live, we look at the experience of the gigs and the tours, both from point of view of the bands and the fans. So in the case, we've got Pauline Black's t-shirt from the tour of the US and Compton's version of the album from the same tour where he's put all his backstage passes. And we have interviews throughout the exhibition that look at different aspects. And in the live, they talk about what it was like to be at a gig, what it was like to be on stage, but also acknowledging the, the relatively small anti-racist fascist movements that did attend the gigs and did put a mar on some of them. In this section of the exhibition, we look at the two-tone identity, and in particular, the fashions uh, and the looks and the style that were associated with the movement. And we look at the, the fashions that were worn by the band members and also the fans. So, for example, we look at the two-tone suits, the tonic suits that were such a key part of the look, but also the Harrington jackets that were worn particularly by many of the fans. Uh, but also in this section, we've got a number of items that were worn by band members. Uh, we do a little feature on the, the pork pie hat that was such a key part of the, of the two-tone look, something that came from the original Jamaican rude boy look. We also have clothing that was worn on stage by members of the other bands. We have a, a top that was worn by Rhoda Dakar of the Body Snatchers and a jacket that was designed and worn by Saxa of the Beat uh, and he wore this when the band were featured on Top of the Pops. We kind of give that side of the story as well. As we move out of the main section towards Legacy we have this fantastic poster wall which showcases posters that are advertising new singles, new albums but also individual gigs like the one of Tiffany's at Great Yarmouth from the Two Tone Tour. Uh, it's just give a sense of the time and the, the sort of the visuals of the two-tone bands. And the last section of the exhibition looks at the various aspects of the legacy of two-tone, both in terms of musically, and we particularly focus on the third wave that emerged in America in the mid-1980s. We also look at what the bands did next. So we've got a great range of material from Neville Staple and the Neville Staple Band, We've also got elements from tribute bands and bands more locally that were very much inspired by the two-tone movement. And as well as the a range of material that people collect and have from the day. This section, we also feature one of the other artists who looks at the two-tone connections that just gives you a small idea of the bands that influence the two-tone movement, but also how the two-tone movement influenced people fair on. And lastly, the legacy of the message. And here we really focus on the anti-apartheid work that Jerry Dammers did, 
both towards the end of Two Tone and going forward with the Nelson Mandela concerts, particularly in 1988 and 1990. And there's a whole case of wonderful material to explore there.